Hi everybody, today we're gonna to talk about what a titration is. So here's the basic definition. So when you're doing titration, it's a neutralization reaction. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. But the reason that you perform it is in order to determine the concentration of an acid or a base. So I have the solution and I don't know its concentration, but I can do a titration and figure that out. So we use this setup that you see in this picture. This long skinny tube on top is called a burette. And what happens is I fill that up with either an acid or a base, but whichever one I put in there is called the titrant. That's the solution that I fill the burette with. And then I want to slowly let that titrant drip into the flask below. I control that flow with a stopper. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a flask or a beaker underneath, but what happens is if your titrant is an acid, then I would fill this flask or a beaker with the base. And when I combine an acid or a base at the end of the titration, what I'm left with will be some sort of neutralized solution. So this is what it will be after. Now, I could also do the reverse. My titrant could be a base. I could put a f acid into my flask. It would still end up neutralized afterwards, so it can be flipped upside down. Now, let's talk about that neutralization piece. So this is actually a kind of reaction you already know. It follows the pattern of a double replacement reaction. So that's not new. It's just a really specific example of it because we're combining an acid and a base. And when we do that, we always will make water and salt. So in this example, it tells me that I have sodium hydroxide. Because I see the hydroxide, I know that that piece is actually the base. And so I would just write that formula as NaOH. And then I have my acid of hydrochloric acid that is HCl. And what I'm always going to get is water. And I wrote HOH for a reason. Because this is double replacement, that water came from this H from the acid and this OH from the base. So those two things together were my water. Yes, you could also write it H2O, but this helps you see the pattern of the double replacement piece. In order to figure out the salt, what's uh, made, look at the leftovers. If I take the OH off, I'm left with Na. And if I take the H off of the acid, I'm left with Cl. That's what I'm going to combine, and that's going to become this salt over here. So that's just NaCl, plain table salt. So what this reaction produces is water, and NaCl is sodium chloride. So it's still double replacement where everybody's switching partners, but you have to get water as one of your products. That is the process that is going on inside over here. And so at the end of that titration, that's what you end up with is a neutralized solution that's basically just salt water. Once the titration is done, then we end up doing this calculation to figure out, well, what was that unknown concentration that I needed? So we're gonna use a slightly familiar formula with a twist. So you already know MV. This is very similar, but now it has NMV. <clears throat> now I also want you to notice everything over here has A for acid, and everything over here has Bs telling me that it pertains to base, okay? So let's go with what we already know. M means molarity, so it's either the molarity of the acid or the base, depending on which side we're on. And then the V is still volume of the acid or the base. The N is the number of important things. So in an acid, the important thing is H. So N is the number of H's that the acid has. For a base, the important part is the OH. So this is the number of OH's that the base has. So let's do an example here. So it tells me the titration was done with sodium hydroxide. The unknown right here, it says, is the unknown molarity of the acid. So the thing I'm gonna be solving for is the acid's molarity. That's our goal to figure out. Now it tells me that the flask initially contains 25 milliliters of the acid. The unknown thing always goes in the bottom, okay? And it tells me it's hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. And it tells me we had 25 milliliters of that. So there's all my acid information. Now that means that the titrant was the base. Okay, so the formula of the titrant, it says we used sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH, and it tells me we knew that molarity, which is 
And then it tells me we started at the top with 0, 0.00 milliliters and at the end it read this. That tells me I used 31.3 milliliters of the base in order to do the titration. So then you're just gonna substitute in all of the information that you know. So for the acid, N is one because there's one H in there. <clears throat> I do not know its molarity but I know that we started with 25.0 milliliters, okay? Now if I do the base, there's one OH in there. I knew its molarity was this, and the volume that I used was there, okay? Then I'm just gonna solve using algebra, 0.2 times 31.3 is this, divide by 25. Now, when you're considering sig figs, do not use these N numbers because they didn't actually come from measurements. All of my other numbers came from measurements, so just use your sig figs there. The lowest I see is two sig figs here, so I'm gonna make my answer have two sig figs. So now I know that the acid molarity was actually 0.25 molar, okay? Now I wanna change this a little bit. I wanna say, well, what if I changed it and I used sulfuric acid instead? How is that different? Sulfuric acid, still gonna start with an H. Sulfuric means that it was with the sulfate ion. So this is H2SO4. What that changes is this. Now that acid contributed two hydrogens to the neutralization reaction. So what that changes is instead of a one, I'm gonna put a two. And the rest would stay the same, just because that's the example that we're picking. There was still only one hydroxide for the base. So that number of hydrogens changed this piece. And then I could solve here. Oops, I forgot my X. and I would still do two sig figs, and so I would get here 0.13 molar. So that's what happens if you've got more than one H or OH. That's where it changes in the formula, okay? Now, another thing we can do with the titration is we can turn it into this graph, which we call a titration curve. So in this example, just because that's what I picked, the titrant, remember, is the thing in the burette, and that was a base, and so that means I was titrating an acid, <clears throat> At the end, that acid will become neutralized, but in the beginning, it is an acid. So let's look at this curve, okay? The nice thing is that all titration curves have the same basic shape. So once you understand it, there's not a lot of variability, okay? Now on the x-axis, we have the volume of base added. So that means over here, it's a low volume. You haven't added very much base. Over here, you have a high volume. I've added a lot, a lot of base to it, okay? On the y-axis, we're talking about pH. What that means is on the bottom, we're talking about a low pH, which remember is acidic. And at the top, we have a high pH, which means it's a base, okay? So let's look at at the beginning of this graph, right here, my pH starts off low. That's correct because I'm starting as an acid. So at the beginning, I have a low pH and I also have a low amount of titrant that was added, right? Early off in the titration, you've not added very much. But as you add more and more titrant, notice that this pH starts to go up. Okay, if I follow all the way to the end of the curve, notice how high I get. So over here, it's a really high pH. What that means is that I added a high amount of titrant, okay? But that's not actually the goal. The goal of a titration is to achieve this point right here. This is called the equivalence or you could also say the end point. What I want is a perfectly neutral solution. So over here, this is bad. This is not the goal, okay? What I want is to achieve a perfectly neutral solution in 
my beaker. Okay, that's going to help me get the most accurate um, molarity of my unknown. Okay, so let's write some of that down. In a titration curve, it shows the pH of the neutralized solution and how it changes as the titrant is added. Now, the reason that that works is because we have an indicator in that beaker as well. This changes color, so it shows us the pH change going on. Otherwise, we would have no idea what the pH is at each time, okay? This helps us know when the acid and base have mixed in exactly the right proportion because remember the goal is for them to neutralize. I only know that because the indicator changes color for me, okay? Now, <clears throat> that special part that we talked about is called the equivalence or the endpoint. This is when the two solutions have mixed in perfectly equal proportions and we know that because of the indicator you have reached the end point. It's really easy to accidentally add more and go past the endpoint, and that's what we're showing in this extra little end of the curve. But really, the goal is to get the endpoint, even though it's in the middle. Okay. When you combine strong acids and bases, the goal is that the equivalent point uh, occurs perfectly at seven because that is the neutral pH. All right. That's everything you need to know about titrations. Good job, everybody.